when we look at other people's work and we say, they got it done so easy, they're overnight success, et cetera, et cetera. Where it took a long time. My name is Damon Brown of DamonBrown.net. My main thing is helping you as a side hustler, a solopreneur, or otherwise a non-traditional entrepreneur. Today we're gonna talk about jealousy. Jealousy is one of those things that happens. I'm generally not a jealous person, but I've had moments where I'm just like, I want that. Why don't I have that yet? It's so frustrating. And I got best-selling books. I've done four TED Talks. I got a nice family. There's so little to complain about, and I'm grateful for that. And even I feel those things, even with what I've accomplished and what I've been lucky enough to have. So today we're gonna to talk about jealousy and what you can kind of do with it. We're gonna talk about four different ways that you can process that. If you like this kind of content, you can always join me here at uh, Bring Your Worth TV show. Still trying to figure out what I'm going to call it. <laughs> we're, we're on our 150th episode. It's every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 11.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, Vegas time. If you're liking it, be sure to like. You can hit the little bell so you can subscribe and get a little notification when it happens. You can also subscribe so you get a message in your email or wherever you happen to be, even on your phone, when I have a new episode coming up. And if there's other people that like it, be sure and share it with them. I found that you cannot get there alone, period. And that's myself included. So let's talk about jealousy. Um, some people are jealous because they feel as though they don't have the same resources as other people. Some people feel jealous because um, they feel as though that other people have had a certain amount of privilege. My own jealousy that's been creeping up, frankly, lately, is rooted in impatience. Why am I not there yet? When are we gonna be there? I have two little kids, eight and five, and I always think of that that Elmo Elmo video that talks about, are we there yet, are we there yet, while he's sitting in the back of the car, while his parents are driving. That's the energy I have right now. Why aren't we there yet? I've had a couple best-selling books. Why isn't this one doing better? I have this, I have that. Why isn't this doing better? Why isn't the financial here, there, or there? I'm usually a very patient person, but I also, when you create, you're gonna have those cycles when you're feeling less patient. And so I found that there's four different ways that I and perhaps you will be able to process that feeling of jealousy that creeps up. The first thing is to have, have a support system on a parallel path. Not necessarily the same path, but on a parallel path. This is important. When I lived in Silicon Valley, the people that I hung out with, because of the nature of San Francisco, not even necessarily me, just being in the mix, I had friends, colleagues, people I respected, who were lawyers, who were venture capitalists, who were journalists like myself at the time, who were authors, who were uh, founders, of course, who were doing their own startups. And for those three years that I lived there, a lot of us were on a parallel path. That meant that I was doing my first major book. I spent five years on that book. My book had just come, came out. So it was kind of like my coming out party. It was kind of like that kind of energy where I was trying to figure out where my next level was going to be. There were other people that I was really close to that were founding companies for the first time and they were starting to get traction, they got their first funding and all that. So we were all in this Nancy stage. We're all seedlings in a sense. Because of that, we shared similar frustrations. I have this major book out, but I'm still broke. I got funding from a venture capitalist, but I'm not sure how I'm gonna pay the rent this month because the money hasn't come in. That's a parallel path. The path that I'm on right now is a little bit different. So now my path is, I've had some best-selling books, I have a coaching practice, I have speaking gigs. What's my next book going to be? How can I improve the channel? I have already have a foundation of things that I started in my career. What are other things I wanna do? Who do I admire? So the people that are in my circle right now are different because we're at a different place in our career. So the people in my circle aren't just starting their career and the people in my circle aren't in the sunset of their career. Instead, they're kind of mid-career, which is where I'm at right now. If you know people or connect with people on a parallel path, even if they're different parts of their career, you're able to see how the sausage is made. You're able to see the inside goods. When I talk with people and they understand my inuit frustration, impatience and sometimes my jealousy right now, they get it. Because if I was talking to someone who was at the beginning of their career and they're like, well, Damon, you have three best-selling books. What are you complaining about? That doesn't give agency to my emotions and my feelings. In fact, it might help me, might make me feel guilt and shame for having those feelings, which make it, makes it worse. I have some good videos on Brene Brown and guilt and shame. Be sure and check that out if that's some of the stuff that you're feeling. If you're able to talk to people who are on a parallel path, which is why networking, building a brain trust, which is a board of directors, as some people call it. I have a video about that. I'll be sure and put a link in there. That's why it's so important. If you end up having the so-called Instagram life, when you're just seeing the highlights of other people's stuff, 
but you're seeing people's highlight reel, but then you're li really like living the real life, you're gonna think that everyone else's life is perfect. Because I have a circle of people who are in a similar career path, in different career or different professions, but in a similar career path, or even the, <clears throat> the mentors that I have, they're on a higher level, I can talk to them and realize they're dealing with the same stuff that I'm dealing with. That brings things back down to earth. There's no reason for me to be jealous of them or jealous of other people because they're dealing with the same shit that I am. You're not gonna have that perspective if you're going alone. As I talk about, going out alone is not the way you wanna do this. I have an independent publishing company. I have an independent private coaching practice over at DamonBrown.net. This YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Brown Damon is independent. I'm independent as hell. And I still got a team. You gotta have other people. And then those people can provide sympathy and empathy for whatever you might be feeling. Number two, you need to set your own metrics. I talk about this quite a bit in Build From Now, How to Know Your Power, See Your Abundance and Nourish the World. It's available at DamonBrown.net and all your favorite retailers. I'll be sure to get a signed copy if you come through DamonBrown.net. That's what I talk about in Build From Now where you have to set up your own metrics. Going back to like freelancing, which is what I've been a freelance journalist for many, many years. I talk about that in the Damon Brown Reader and in a couple of the videos here on this channel. One of the things that we've been obsessed with as independent freelance journalists is becoming the six-figure freelance writer. So making six figures, 100,000 plus on freelance writing. Many years ago, I realized that wasn't the metric that I wanted. When I discovered passive income, which I have a video on that, several videos, in fact, I have a playlist that I'll link up here. When I discovered passive income, my metric ended up becoming, I don't wanna get six figures per se. Nothing wrong with six figures. I like six figures. I don't wanna get six figures per se. I want it so that I get enough passive income so that becomes my main income. And any main income I get ends up being gravy, investment for my family, whatever. I knew so many people who were six-figure writers who were burning themselves out, who had to work so hard. I mean, think about how many, and I'm talking about just journalism, how many articles you have to write or how much you have to negotiate to get paid to write uh, for each of these articles to make six figures. I got two little kids at home. I'm the primary caretaker, you know. I like to have naps during the day. <laughs> so I'm not that dude, like I'm, I'm not. But I am super prolific when it comes to creating product and services and so forth. As I talk about my passive income videos, I have about 50 streams of passive income. I think I'm bubbling around just under 50. I have about 48. By the time my new book, Career Remix, comes out, I'll probably be at about 52 or so because I have the audiobook of that, I have a Kindle version, etc. But I also have this YouTube channel, which is part of my passive income, which is part of how, why I started it. And we're on our 150th or so episode right now. This part of my passive income too. That's the metric for me. So me saying I need to make six figures every year, not only was it stressful, but if I made six figures at that rate, 20% or more here in America is going to taxes. So I'm really making 80,000 and then I'm tired by the end of the year. It doesn't fit for me, but me creating product and services, serving you, talking into, <laughs> talking to a camera, you know, two hundreds now becoming thousands of you out here in YouTube land and on these different shows. I can do that. I can go in my closet over here and record an audiobook and that becomes a passive income stream. And now over the last couple of years, my passive income has been hitting the five figures. Looks like it's gonna happen again this year. I'm thankful for that. That's a metric that makes sense for me. And I'm able to spend time with my kids and with passive income, that money's coming in. That's a metric. If my metric was just making it a six-figure writer, I'd probably be burnt out right now. Because the type of writing that I do makes it difficult to reach six figures. Either I'd have to go and negotiate really hard for the articles that I write, or I'd have to write so many articles that I would burn myself out by the time November, December came around for that year. You have to have metrics that fit your life. My life is my partner and my two kids. My life is spending time with y'all. My life is meditating in the corner over here on my little pad and taking a nap on the couch over there and having a fluid life. Otherwise, if I'm going the independent route, why should I work myself to death? So come up with your own metrics. If you understand the sacrificing it takes to make these certain strides that you're jealous that other people from making, then maybe you'll think twice about the metrics that you're going after. And that can help the jealousy go away. 
Number three, you have to stretch your timeline. I talk about this a lot if you've been following any of my books from the Ultimate Bites as Entrepreneur um, all the way to the recent one, uh, Built From Now. I even talk about this in Career Remix. We put so much pressure on ourselves to get things done in a short period of time. We can get almost anything done, but we might need to stretch the timeline. I talk about this in the Entrepreneur in Residence that I had over at the Toledo Library. It's finally becoming public because it was actually a private thing for a little while. I'm actually putting them and making them available for you for free over on this channel. So I'll throw the link over here. <laughs> One of these corners in the left-hand corner, right-hand corner, you'll see the link when it happens. But that's fresh off the press. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Joy, it's three sessions. I think it'll be a lot of fun. And yeah, I worked really hard on it. But I talk about that extensively as far as stretching your timeline with my previous startup, So Quotable, as I talk about and build from now, with the people who were doing in the startup world, they could have did the app that I did, So Quotable, which allowed you to capture people's quotes. They could have done that app, programmed it the whole thing in like five days. It was a really simple app, right? I won't get into the details, but it was super simple. For my colleagues and my peers who weren't married, didn't have little kids at home because I was a primary caregiver, caretaker of my baby at the time. People who weren't in that situation, didn't have a mortgage, had to just take care of themselves. They're probably gonna do that in five weeks. It took me five months, five months to get so cool to walk. Proud of the work. I was still very much available as a primary caretaker of, of then my wife and I's baby. He was like four months old at the time. So cute little kid, had to make sure that he was good. That led to me doing a TED talk my first TED talk and all, all the rest is history. But I had to stretch my timeline and there were many frustrating mornings because I worked super early in the morning because I was taking care of my kid during the day. There were mornings where I wake up super frustrated because I knew that someone else who had less responsibilities or had different priorities, let's be real about it, could have gotten it done in five days to five weeks. It took me five months from uh, September to uh, March. So whatever that is, six months? It took me that long to get it out. I got it out just in time for my first TED Talk. But because I stretched my timeline, I'm speaking to you today. Because if I said I have to get it done in five days, I would have burnt myself out. You see the pattern here? I would have burnt myself out, let go of my responsibilities, and then I wouldn't be the father that I am today, which is hopefully a good one. So it depends on what your priorities are. So if you stretch your timeline, you get a lot of things done. I found that we tend to get jealous when we look at other people's work and we say, they got it done so easy, they're overnight success, et cetera, et cetera. Where it took a long time. For me to have the 48 passive income streams that I have, it took me about five, six years. The original Bites as Entrepreneur came out in August of 2016. Just had the anniversary earlier this year. My eighth book, Career Remix, is coming out in a few months. Again, January 11th. 2022. That's eight books within a five and a half year stretch. That's why I have 50 passive income streams. That's nothing to be jealous of because you understand, as I'm trying to share with you, how the sausage is made. But that timeline couldn't be shortened. It had to take five years to that, that many books to build a community with y'all and hopefully give you some type of service. So stretch your timeline and maybe you'll find a little bit more patience and be less jealous of what other people are doing. Number four, create more than you consume. Create more than you consume. I actually learned this from Chase Jarvis, the founder of Creative Live, shout out to him. And when we're just consuming content, then all we're doing is observing. We're in observational mode, almost like a phone being on airplane mode. We're just observing. And two things happen with that. The first thing is that we're not adding to the conversation. And second of all, we feel like, um, even, even maybe on a subconscious level, that we don't have our agency. We can't impact the world because we're not doing shit, right? <laughs> and you're watching other people shine. They're busy doing the work and you're just watching them. Start your day with, with creating. And that could be um, writing in your journal, that could be coming up with a strategy for the future. That could be um, if you got little kids, or even if you don't have little kids, I know a lot of adults, play. Play with Legos, play hide and seek. Go for a run, get out into nature. Do something that's going to impact the world and therefore change your mindset. I meditate almost every morning. That helps me with that. But more importantly, I'm spending time with y'all. 
with these jealous feelings that I'm feeling, I was like, you know what? I need to record some videos. So you might be watching this a week after I record it. You might be watching it three months after I record it. The point is, is that I'm showing up. As Seth Godin says, you got to show up. I'm showing up for y'all. That's part of how you can process this. Shifting from observational mode to creative mode. And once you start creating, you start to realize how much agency you have. You never lost it at all. Me feeling impatient and frustrated and cranky today, my world's the exact same world it was yesterday when I went to bed. Nothing bad happened, knock on wood. My health is fine. Nothing changed in the last 12 hours, except my mind. So I'm creating. And me creating allows me to make an impact in the world and remind me of the agency that I have. I don't need to be jealous about other people, even jealous of you. The main thing I need to do is keep showing up. If you're liking this content, be sure and join me every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for the Bring Your Worst Show, 11.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, Vegas time. Be sure to subscribe and you'll get a notification every time it comes through. There's also a little bell that I'm learning about. Hey, we're all learning here in YouTube. You can click the little bell and you'll get a notification on your phone and on your email when a new episode comes out. If you're liking the content, be sure and share it with other people. Give it a thumbs up. And again, it's not meant to be a solo process. As I mentioned, I'm solo as hell, but even I got a group, right? So it's important that we look at it as all of us being together. If you're feeling that jealous streak, maybe look at your network and start creating some good shit. Maybe that's the secret to everything. Until next time, remember that you can always bring your worth and that you can always build from now. Take care.